press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss another update from Motorbeam. I've been wondering what exactly is this thing right here? It's not a sedan, it's not an SUV. It's something which Volvo likes to call the V90 Cross Country. Guys and girls, welcome to Motorbeam. And if you think you can ride this off as just another boring station wagon, I have some real bad news for you. Indians don't really love estates in spite of the practicality it brings on the table. Honestly, station wagons are boxy and appealing, but this is different. The V90 is an estate sibling of the S90 sedan, which means the design language is more or less similar. The V90 gets familiar front fascia as the S90, but this station wagon gets very sleek elements like sloping rear windscreen and signature Volvo tail lights. There are distinct SUV elements like black cladding around the wheel arches and it's not all show. Ground clearance is up by 60 mm from the S90 to an SUV rivaling 210 mm. Large 20 inch wheels and the dynamic stance makes it break away from what wagons are usually known to be. The cabin invokes a unique sense of luxury. The typical Scandinavian interiors are well put together with great quality. But it's not only the looks, the cabin is high on functionality too. Touchscreen which has practically reduced the tons of buttons we have seen on older Volvo cars. Electronically adjustable front seats literally hug you in place with great support from all ends. Both front seats offer heated as well as cooled function. And if that's not all, you can pamper yourself with the massage function. The rear bench is comfortable but not as much as the front. Headroom and support is decent. But there is a huge transmission tunnel here which makes it best only for two passengers. I will honestly lose track. Volvo has equipped the car with so many goodies. It has four zone climate control, an amazing 1400 watt 19 speaker audio system, paddle shifters, LED turn with steering headlamps, and heck, it even has a heated steering wheel. There's an amazingly large boot measuring 560 litres right here. What the hell man? Where did you? Volvo invited me to drive this car. So I'm here. Are you kidding me? I've already done with like half the stuff. Let's not argue, let's drive, come on. So we are on the way to Coorg from Mangalore and I've been driving this car for a while. Now this engine is the most powerful 2 litre engine you get from Volvo in India. Performance is pretty good, this car is heavy. Power delivery is linear, like you really don't have that kick in the pant feeling. But when you just floor it urgently, there is a slight hesitation after which it's pretty cool. Now there's one very clever tech which Volvo is using in this car. Uh, what it does is it has a canister which stores compressed air and it pumps it out at lower RPM so that what happens is turbo lag is contained so that the turbocharger spins at lower revs. 
obviously it cannot do it below 1500 rpm so there is initial lag but once you get past 1500 rpm the power delivery is very linear the motor is very smooth and it's around 4000 rpm when it starts getting coarse and quite loud there are four driving modes here eco comfort off road and dynamic now of course in eco mode what it does is power delivery is very smooth uh, there is no punch gearbox takes its own sweet time in shifting gears but it also conserves fuel there's a start stop system the cluster actually changes color to remind you that you're in eco mode and this car will return good fuel economy when you're driving in eco mode and it has more than adequate power and performance for city driving the comfort mode which is actually the default mode it has decent enough punch and when you're driving in off road mode and once you go above 40 km per hour it will automatically put the vehicle back into comfort mode So once you're in off-road mode, what the car does is it channels more power to the rear wheels. It also activates hill descent control. Uh, the steering becomes slightly light, so it's easier to do off-road. Now, as you were talking about the gearbox, this eight-speed transmission is pretty smooth. Though we don't have a sports mode on offer, and I think the best way to really, you know, drive uh, on an urgent note is to use the paddle shifters. Now let's just get the dynamics. Uh, I would rather sit on the wheel and talk about it. So let's swap. The V90 Cross Country has increased weight, and Volvo has equipped this with full-time all-wheel drive. And these Pirelli tires on this car offer tremendous amount of grip. They are 20 inch rubber on this vehicle, which I think is like too much if you want to take it off road because low profile rubber and 20 inch rims really don't work as a great combination for our roads considering they are bad potholes. But in spite of the low profile and big tires, it still has very good ride quality. In fact, at low speeds you can barely feel the road, and uh, it's only when you hit a bad patch at high speeds that there's a slight thud inside the cabin. The ride quality is so good. In terms of handling, uh, I was a bit disappointed. because uh, the extra weight and uh, the suspension which is on the softer side results in this having quite a bit of body roll the steering does offer good feel and feedback but this isn't a car you would go corner craving with but on the flip side uh, if you compare the handling on this car with say an SUV definitely uh, it does better because obviously it's it's lower Spite of the length, it's quite easy to maneuver, and that's thanks to the steering wheel, which is light. So that will definitely help in city driving. So if you're planning to spend this kind of money on a luxury car, you probably have a Mercedes or a BMW or an Audi already in your garage. But what the V90 Cross Country offers is a lot of practicality. It gives you the space of an SUV with the dynamics of a sedan, which itself is a very good thing overall.